Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Hi everyone, I'm Jane McCarthy. Tonight the Spokane City Council is considering a program that would give downtown businesses an incentive for making security upgrades to their property. Ahead of the meeting tonight, Krem 2's Amanda Rowley looked into how successful the program has been at cutting back on crime. Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design, or SEPTED, is a program that's been used by Spokane property owners for about a decade. It's a free assessment by certified police officers or ambassadors. They look at what changes can be made to your property so it's less attractive for criminal activity. That can mean adding lighting, security cameras, or clearing away overgrown bushes. But now the downtown Spokane Business District wants to give rebates to downtown businesses taking part in this. The rebate would go toward money spent on security camera systems and other security improvements. According to city documents, property owners who apply for the rebate program must be business improvement district ratepayers in good standing. It would be a dollar for dollar match up to a maximum of $2,500 per property. This will be offered in the form of a discount in the business improvement district property owners following year's assessment. That's according to city docs. If council approves the program, $26,000 will be allocated to the BID. Spokane Police Lieutenant Steve Braun says the program does work and helps reduce crime. He attributes the success to the dozens of requests to survey properties. So with that continued demand for, for that service, it tells me the word is getting out through the people that work, play, and, and uh, live in the downtown area that it's, it's a worthwhile program that they want to be a part of. In fact, Lieutenant Braun says the department started with two officers certified to do the assessments. But with the increase in requests, it now has four certified officers assessing properties in the downtown core. Amanda Roldy, Creme 2 News. It was a false narrative. It was, it was a terrible thing. Uh, we can never let this happen to another president again. After nearly two years, Special Counsel Robert Mueller delivered his report into Russian interference in the 2016 election to the Attorney General. Yesterday, AG William Barr released a four-page summary of the report stating there was no evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. But the summary also states the report does not exonerate the president when it comes to claims of obstruction of justice. Lawmakers on both sides are now pushing for the full release of that report. The president also weighed in, saying it wouldn't bother him if the full report were to be released. Whether or not you're a supporter of President Trump or not, whatever you feel, there is no good reason not to make the report public. Today, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer once again tried to bring up a vote on a House-passed resolution to release that full report. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell objected. No Representative Kathy Morris Rogers sent this statement to Krem 2 today, writing, quote, I look forward to seeing the special counsel's full report, but as more details continue to come forward, it proves what President Trump has been saying all along. There was no collusion. As I voted in favor earlier this month, the report should be made available to the public for all to see. All is calm outside right now, but some wet weather is scheduled to move into the inland northwest. The mountains could even see a little bit of snow late tonight. Tom Sherry in the Weather Center tonight tracking that, Tom. Yeah, we've got a few showers headed our way tonight. I don't think we'll see much in the way uh, locally here in Spokane, but some of the surrounding areas may see some of that. And again tomorrow, but I think our rain really is going to hold off until about Thursday. So we take a look at this 56 degrees right now with cloudy skies around the area. Winds out of the east at nine miles an hour. Your day planner for forecast calling for a chance of a few showers this evening and overnight, uh, especially in the outlying areas, northern Idaho, uh, northeastern Washington. We'll look for a high tomorrow of 55. That's still above the average high, which is about 51 degrees this time of year. Uh, and again, it looks like it'll be mostly dry on Tuesday. For the weekend, looks great. 59 on Saturday, partly cloudy and 61 degrees on Sunday. I'll run down that seven day forecast for you coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Tom. We're now just about an hour away from tip off for the Gonzaga women's NCAA tournament game against Oregon State. The Bulldogs and the Beavers will play tonight at 6 o'clock in Corvallis, Oregon. Karthik Ben Katrama is live at Gill Coliseum tonight. And Karthik, what are some of the keys to the game tonight? Yeah, everyone, it's just it's a crazy atmosphere. People are just starting to trickle in. For Gonzaga, the main reason why they were able to advance out of the first round of the NCAA tournament is large part due to their bench stepping up big time. Now, 
If you remember, Laura Stockton and Jill Townsend are both still out with injuries. And so players have had to step up and Gonzaga's had to go deep in their bench and they're going to continue to do so. Players like Louise Forsyth, Jen Worth, Melody Kempton all played huge minutes against Little Rock and they came up in huge moments. They combined for 19 points and 8 rebounds. Forsyth played her most minutes in a single game this season against Little Rock and that's solid production off the bench. This is what the team had to say about the depth from the first round contest and how that can carry over to the second game. Everybody who played the game had more than one point. We have several players with um, assists. We have several players with steals and blocks. So th they just made an impact. I love to just bring energy, and I know my main job is there to get rebounds and just do putbacks and stuff like that. So that's what I went in there to do, just see if I can give us, our team as much energy as I could. Just remembering what like all of our parts were in the game, staying cal like, calm and focused and just like, playing for strikes. The other area the Bulldog must do well in is defending the three ball. The Beavers are fourth in the country in three-point field goal percentage. Their abilities from the perimeter is that what is what really opens up their whole entire offense in the half court. They play a smaller lineup, and about everyone on that team can shoot, so the bigs for Gonzaga are going to have to really be active guarding the three ball. Obviously, they shoot the ball very well from the perimeter. So uh, we're going to have to defend things very differently. We were, we were trying to pr protect the paint um, strongly against uh, Little Rock and against Oregon State. We're going to have to defend the three and protect the paint. And every, every game that you play in the tournament, the teams get um, more versatile and bigger and more well-rounded and those kind of things. And so this is just the next step for us. And hopefully we'll show up ready to defend and play with the same kind of energy. This game's going to mean a little more to one assistant coach for Gonzaga. Assistant coach Stacy Kleinsmith started her collegiate coaching career here with the Beavers. You know, she had just got done playing professional basketball, had done some player development stuff, and decided that she wanted to get into coaching, so she made some phone calls. And what she stumbled upon was a director of basketball operations position here with the Beavers 10 seasons ago. I think it'll always kind of be that, oh, that's, it's fun to, uh, to always go back to your first job, um, but uh, nothing compares to where I am now. You know, eventually she just kept getting coaching jobs and she landed herself a job here at Gonzaga in the 2014-2015 season. That year was a good one for the Bulldogs. So good that they went to the NCAA tournament, won their first round game. And then in the second round, who did they play? Oregon State with a chance to go to the Sweet 16, just like today. It just seems like everything comes full circle, you know, so I, I get my first job here and then our first NCAA tournament bid as a coaching staff at Gonzaga, we're back at Oregon State again, so uh, it just seems like everything is coming full circle and, um, and it was a kind of a neat experience to come back and, and, and also it was kind of neat to, get, to beat them to go to the Sweet 16 that first year too. Oddly enough for Kleinsmith, she is going to have the opportunity to do something she did in that 2014-2015 season in the same place where she started her coaching collegiate career. Well, tip-off is just a little bit away. As I said, the fans are trickling in. I'm sure excited. It's time for some basketball, baby. Reporting live from Corvallis, Oregon, I'm Karthik Vekatraman, Krem 2 Sports. All right, Karthik, thank you very much. As for the men, they had a big win on Saturday against Baylor. The Zags will now go on to face a familiar opponent in Florida State. That is the team that beat the Zags in last season's Sweet 16. Tip off set for 4.09 this Thursday afternoon in Anaheim. You can catch it on Creme 2. And be sure to tune into our special pregame coverage on Thursday at 3.30 right here on Creme 2. We'll be covering all things Zags from campus that day.